Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week called Upgrade. It's the latest picture from Blumhouse Distribution Company, BH Tilt, along with Universal's new company, OTL Releasing. It's a story about a young man who's a mechanic that lives in a futuristic city with his wife, who one night wants up being paralyzed in a homeless camp by four men who also killed his wife so he wants up being prolegeptic that is until he gets answered but then he gets answers to a young innovator to implant a chip that can actually control his body and be able to seek revenge on the four guys so it's sort of like a mix between the Six Million Dollar Man, the TV series with Lee Majors. It's a very good show. In fact, it's on Cozy TV. <laughs> yeah, a digital channel. And Death Wish. Also has a mix of the movie Monkey Shines uh, in place. But it stars Logan Marshall Green, who's been in several films, including the Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. Betty Gabriel from Get Out. Yes, remember the the, the lady who, who has that creepy smile in the movie? Which uh, he was, she was chosen. Yeah, Harrison Gilberson, Benedict Hardold, Melanie Boyego, Christopher Kirby, Clayton Jaberson, Sachin Job. Michael M. Foster, Richard Kaforn, Linda Cropper, Simon Malden, and Kai Bradley. And it's written and directed by Lee Winnell. Not only is he an actor, but he's also a producer and writer, known for, for writing all the Saw movies, as well as the Insidious movies. Yep, that's him. The movie begins, we meet a young man named Gray Trace, who's played by local Marshall Green, who stays home as a mechanic, lives with his wife, Aisha, in a futuristic city. Aisha works at a company called Cobot, which contributing increase in human computer augmentations. But Gray chose to remain unaugmented out of fear of losing humanity. One day Gray asks Aisha to return a furbished car to his client Aaron Keen, who's a famous tech innovator in charge of a rival company called Vessel. While visiting his home, Aaron reveals his latest creation, which is an artificial intelligence chip called STEM, which is served as an auxiliary brain. On their way home, Gray and Aisha self-driving car suddenly malfunctions and crashes at a homeless camp, and that's where we meet four guys who shot Aisha and killed her and severing Gray's spine. Yeah, he got shot as well. But Gray suddenly watches Aisha die as she was losing a lot of blood. Gray suddenly returns home months later, already in a wheelchair, so he's now quadriplegic under the care of his mother Pamela. During those months, you know, he was feeling very devastated that he lost his wife. So suddenly we get a detective named Cortez, played by Betty Gabriel, who was assigned for the case to identify the attackers who killed his wife, which actually causes Gray to sink into depression. Apparently, he was going to commit suicide by overdosing a lot of medication, but that didn't work out. So in the hospital, he was visited by Aaron, who suddenly surgically implanted stem, inside his body. So now 
Ray goes through with the surgery and suddenly controls his limb faster than ever before. Aaron then had Grace sign a non-disclosure agreement to conceal STEM for everyone. So this is basically their secret, so he shouldn't tell anyone about that this was surgically implanted. So anyway, he got back in control and he's walking around. Just when uh, Gray was trying to look for the files, you know, trying to find out about the attackers uh, who killed his wife, he actually tells the female uh, AI assistant to shut down, even though he just said shut up. <laughs> then suddenly he hears another AI, and it's a male. It's actually speaking directly from STEM. So now he gets. So Stem gets to talk to him and tells him what to do, such as having to trace um, the patch that's coming from the attackers. So it has like a barcode and and has all the information, so that way he'll be able to identify them where no one else couldn't. So he went straight to the first guy's house just to see where he's hiding just so he could find out uh, who the guy is and when the guy finally shows up this is where he gets to beat the shit out of him well Stan will later tell him that and and then um, when he says permission granted that's where he finally gets to beat the shit out of him in cold blood so he also grabs the kitchen knife it rips his uh, his mouth and and he finally dies. Although there was that one scene in in that part where he took him straight into the kitchen, and then he took out all these uh, dishes, and <laughs> and also just use all these uh, ninja kung fu moves on that guy. So it looks really cool. But anyway, he just like smashes the dishes and. <laughs> over his face and he's like saying what's going on here <laughs> like that so he took that one guy but Cortez suddenly uh, spotted a trace on the first guy he began to find out that Gray had noticed this and if he, if he was there when the murder took place so <laughs> Well, apparently, you know, he was he was lying to her, just telling her that, you know, he was just there, you know, walking around on his wheelchair, just trying to see what's going on. So he continues to go on a killing spree to go after the other guys. He went to the second guy at a local bar, and this is where he, he tries to. Yeah, with under the control of stem, you know, he begins to slice him by um, by using the knife, and of course, beat the shit out of him too. And that is until he found a trace where he begins to find out that yes, this guy is a robot, and actually has a chip that says Cobart, which happens to be the company that his wife works. So he's trying to begin to find out what's going on. And that's when we meet the two guys who was going after um, Gray when he found out about this. But then Stem is suddenly malfunctioning. So he's having trouble controlling it. So then he, he suddenly hires a hacker to hack into the system of Stem so he'll be able to control his body again. That's when the two guys had chasing him around, and which, yeah, one guy, the villain who, who actually um, kills a bartender by actually sneezing one of those Michael bots from his nose, went straight at him. So this is where he finally gets his revenge on the two guys. So it all leads to a car chase. 
between Detective Cortez and Gray. You know, he's driving his uh, classic car. Uh, Stem suddenly controls him, and and suddenly he wants up uh, controlling the other car where a guy was inside, so that way he can go past uh, Cortez and crash into her before Gray suddenly gets into the the lead villain. So it has that particular fight scene by actually pushing him into the glass or so. Which also leads to the ending where something suspicious starts to happen. And I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to say that don't you hate it when sometimes they take a great concept like this movie or any other film and they just throw it into the trash by the time they get into the third act of the movie. And this is one of them. It turns out that the lead villain, this is going to be the spoiler here, um, that the lead villain is actually the wrong guy. That it was actually Stem the whole fucking time and he was the one responsible for controlling, paid all four guys to, to go after Grey and kill Asia, his wife. So this whole thing was a setup. You know, he has to go after the innovator to kill him. Yeah, Gray. Because Stem basically tells him what to do to actually kill him. It's just ridiculous. But other than that, though, um, it's too bad because uh, I thought the first two acts really work. Uh, Logan Marshall Green did a great job playing Gray. You definitely feel sorry for him after losing his wife. All paralyzed, he can't walk, wants up in a wheelchair the whole time. Has his attempt to commit suicide, but that didn't work. But he only gets one solution to stop these guys, since but no one else seemed to help whatsoever. Because they can't do their jobs right to identify. I mean, considering all the technology they have. Yeah. It's kind of cliche here, too. Which, I know, I mean, because with, with computer technology, I mean, they would have identified these guys anyway. So that's the whole point. But I guess that's why you know, writer and director Lee Rennell didn't know what the hell he was doing here. But hey, we have to go there. <laughs> Um, but the, the actors were good, uh, Betty Gabriel, uh, Melanie Bago, and all the rest, they, they did their fine jobs here. Uh, it's just sometimes, you know, when you take a good script, I mean, this is what happens when you have to, you have to go for an actual final ending where it just feels like, yes, this whole thing was a setup. Now, I know this movie was intended to be a horror film. That's why they, they call it a body horror film. But it's no way near as as scary as uh, <laughs> as movies like Alter States or The Fly when it comes to body horror films. Even The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, for that matter. It felt more like just a sci-fi action thriller, if you think about it. So Again, this is just... I guess it just gets a little misleading here. But maybe that's why they had the ending in the first place. Um, Tuffy speaking. Uh, but it did have a good score. It was done by uh, Jet Palmer. It, it, it was so, with all the synthesizers, it definitely makes it feel futuristic. I love how they have an AI, actually, uh, yeah, a female AI just telling you the, the opening credits. So they don't even show the credits, they just show the, the animation. And I thought that was really clever that they put into it. Something we've never seen before. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. So they had some good action scenes, you know. Even shows, even shots of the drones and all of that that they put into it. Um, so it has a mix of that. Some good cinematography. Some good editing and all that but so the movie had some good qualities in there I'll give you that 
but it just needs a significant rewrite on the ending. It doesn't need a cop out. It just needs a better one. So that way the film will flow even better. But despite of that, um, I'll give this movie a pass. It's worth watching. And it's not a big hit. Granted, didn't need to be. It doesn't even feel like it was going to be one anyway. For its budget, it was only like three to five million dollars. So that's that's significant for the budget. But I would say maybe it's worth watching it on a day that's right for you. Um, anyway, um, I give the movie upgrade three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.